words, I rather listen and act and talk. And that's what I've been trying to do to change things here in Ottawa, to change the way our relations function between governments and Aboriginal peoples in this country. I set out to do that some 30 years ago, believe it or not. Some 30 years ago, our ambassador, Cree ambassador to the United Nations, Ted Moses, asked me to travel with him to Geneva and to start working on what is now called the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. That was in 1984 when Ted asked me to travel with him to Geneva because he, one of the things he told me at that time was, you know, Romeo, the Aboriginal peoples of this country are going to be international forces to be reckoned with in the future. And that is exactly what is happening today, thanks to Brenda and her team. So I set out 30 years ago with Ted, Chief Ted Moses at the time, traveled to Geneva every year for more than 30, 23 years, as a matter of fact, as we negotiated and discussed the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. It took 23 years because there were a lot of, uh, a lot of fundamental rights contained in the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Some of them are political, some of them are social, economic, environmental, spiritual rights contained in the UN Declaration. And my hope for change at the time was to be able one day to invoke the UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples before the courts. I think this is the path that we are taking by saying no to FIPA. I think that is the right path because everywhere you look, there are natural resources, huge natural resources in this country. And everywhere you will find natural resources, you will always find Aboriginal peoples too. And respecting Aboriginal rights and treaty rights in, the, in this country. Don't let me fool. Respecting Aboriginal and treaty rights in this country is respecting the environment, is respecting a viable economy for this country. And that's the path we need to take as a country. And that's the, that's the change I, I sought to, to find by accepting Jack, late Jack Layton's invitation to run for the NDP back in 2011. <laughs> I said earlier that I, I was a man of few words, more listening and acting, and that's what I, I, I've been trying to do since I got here in 2011. And one of the things I, I did as, as, as a member of parliament is to introduce a private member's bill in, on January 11th uh, of, uh, of this year. And that private member's bill on the polls on, parliament, on the Parliament of Canada for every legislation that comes through this house must respect and must be in compliance with that very UN Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People that so many of us negotiated for. And that's the change I want to see in this country because I truly believe that respecting Aboriginal rights and treaty rights in this country is good for Canada. People need to realize that. I've shown it over the last 30 years of my work in Northern Quebec. Treaties and the agreements that we signed in Northern Quebec was not only good for the Cree, but also good for the region, good for the non-Aboriginal non in the region, good for the economy of the region, and especially good for, future, for the future of the environment in that part of our country. And if it's possible up in Northern Quebec, it is possible throughout the country. And I just want to say that I was, I've probably spoken on many occasions about this, this FIPA in the House of Commons. I, I rose in the House on many occasions to speak on behalf of the Aboriginal peoples that brought this case forward, saying that you need to consult and especially you need to accommodate the concerns of Aboriginal peoples whenever uh, natural resources involved in any decision making by, by the government or by corporations in this country. And I want to make sure that till I'm, as long as I'm in there, 
I'm going to make sure that's going to happen. And one final thing. Um, thank you for coming out. And congratulations to the organizers of this event. It's always important for me to um, give my greetings from northern, northern Quebec. I, I just came back from, from a, a canoe trip, a five-day canoe trip. You know, and that's, that's what I mean that by more listening and acting on my part. I also introduced the private members bill to redirect or re, uh, bring back the protections that the lakes and rivers of this country require in the future. So I introduced my bill, the Harvard Members Bill on, on the lakes and rivers of my riding, which is, as you probably know, the second largest riding in the country. And I like saying this when I travel throughout the country. My riding is 53% of the landmass in Quebec, so you're looking at half of Quebec right here. Right. I like saying that. And I, 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 I hate to, to remind myself all the time that I, I, and whenever I do speeches, I, I cannot name my writing every time because I'll run out of time. But the, the writing of the uh, WTV, Bay James, Nunavik, EU is the second largest writing, very diversified. And I bring greetings from the people of my writing. Uh, there are Inuit, there are Cree, there are Algonquin communities in my writing, there are forestry towns and mining towns in my writing. So the things that we talk about today are things that are important to my writing as well. And rather than just introducing the bill that I just spoke about, in this house, I count those lakes and those rivers uh, five days. This is exactly what I was looking for 30 years ago when I said to myself, when I told Ted Moses, yes, I'll travel with you and let's make this happen 30 years ago. That road to the adoption of the UN uh, Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People it took 20, 23 years to travel. It took a lot of time. It took a lot of resources. It took a lot of energy. It took a lot of emotions as well, because there are times when I just felt like dropping the ball and going home. But I knew I had to do it. I knew I had to do it for initiatives like this one, opposing these type of agreements. So I'm glad I, I did that. And wholeheartedly, uh, Brenda, you have the NDP support. You have my full support. Thank you very much. Yeah.